Is everybody in this room a landowner? Potential landowner? Wants to buy land? You want to move forward so I can talk to you all just a little bit. Come on, just, just pick up and move, move up in here if you want to or some, somewhere. So I don't have to feel like I'm yelling across the room even though I've got a microphone on. While you're moving forward, I'm Kathy Adams Clark. Um, I am a professional photographer, professional native, uh, nature photographer. I'm a sixth generation Texan born in El Paso, now living in Houston, Texas. My husband, Gary Clark, writes the nature column for the Houston Chronicle and the San Antonio Express News. Um, we write also for Texas Parks and Wildlife, Texas Highways, and do um, photos for both of those magazines. And then I run, I run tours also. I've been a professional photographer since 1995. Prior to that, I was human resource director at Shriners Hospital down in the Texas Medical Center. So what I'm going to talk to you all about is how in the heck do you gear your property toward attacking people like me who are nature, uh, who lead tours. I just got back from Ecuador, for instance, on Monday, so I'm still, still trying to speak Spanish as much as possible. Um, but how do you all attract me, and then how do you attract the people who want to come out on your property? So that's what I'm going to talk about. How many of you all are family folks? Right? Raise your hand. I mean, you all got to move, you know? you got to do something. Okay. The reality is, is that if you start opening your ranch to photographers, you are going to become part of their family. It's kind of a uh, rotten-looking picture, but I had to pull it off my website. Anytime that I bring a group to a ranch, if that ranch owner is running their operation in the proper way, those people will remember you for the rest of their lives. And they will count you as members of their family, and hopefully you'll count them as members of your family. So this can be a very warm Texas experience for people who have never been to Texas, don't know about Texas, or for people in the cities of Texas who don't know anything about ranch life and rural life in Texas. What, ran what people are coming to these ranches for are for clear, crisp, clean images of birds and wildlife. Now, this is a black-crested titmouse, and you might think nothing about your black-crested titmouse, but there are people from around the United States going into Canada. I had people from India on my last Ecuador trip. People are willing to travel around the world to photograph these birds, and you might think of it as a black-crested titmouse, or you might think of it as a chipping sparrow, but to them, this is a trophy equivalent to your trophy buck, I'm not, they're not going to pay as much money as for your trophy buck, but it's equivalent to their trophy, to the trophy buck. You notice also that I've got clean, nice backgrounds with no obstructed views back there. That is what they are looking for because that's the current look in nature photography is no obstructed views. I was in a blind yesterday and I told the landowner, all I need is two and a half hours with this photo blind, two of your work people, and I could turn this into an A number one professional photo blind because they had the birds. What they didn't have is the backgrounds. This is a, an eastern screech owl. You've got them on your property. What this landowner did is he connected with a rehab group in the area that was rehabilitating hawks and owls. They brought out rehab animals, and my group got to photograph five um, owls and hawks that they would never get anyplace else. And this was the thrill of a lifetime for these folks. And so it's this added value, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Added value, night photography. One of the, my specialties now is night painting and going out and painting with light at night. This is what we call in photography painting with light. This is the headlights of a 1964 pickup truck that they used around the ranch. That's what we're painting with. Okay, this isn't high-tech stuff. But photographers got the thrill of a lifetime doing this with an old barn and a windmill. You can see the same thing here. So the little critters that you've got on your property are worth money, even if it happens to be something like one of the cowbirds. These things have, have got money, uh, are worth money. Your deer give you a residual um, income stream on your deer. And if you have any of the rafters, Crested Caracara, which I'm sure most of you all have, Harris's Hawk, which I'm sure most of you all have, if you can figure out how to get these guys to come into a photo blind, and it's not rocket science, we've already figured it out, then, and what you're doing is you're throwing your roadkill in the same spot on your ranch every single day. So when you find roadkill, you're picking and you're bringing it to what we call the gut pit. And then this is attracting your rafters. 
people pay lots of money for these raptors, and they really like them. And, the, you know, they get really excited over we javelina. But, you know, we don't, but they do. And so if you know where things are roosting on your property, start letting your, your, um, your, your workers around the property tell you where you've got roosts going on, because then, once again, this is just added value to bring in people. And then as we get things like migrants coming through, um, then we've got lots of different opportunities. This is shot not here in Texas, but this is shot on a friend of mine's property in North Carolina. This guy took his work shed. He owns two acres of land. He took his work shed, a ramsackled shed in the back of the, uh, back of the property. He took that work shed and he turned it into a 10-person photo blind that has ports 360 degrees away around the blind so that I can take 10 people in that blind at one time and I can lead my workshop and I can talk and I can teach and that type of stuff and people can move around through these ports. Around this work shed he has planted these remarkable gardens with purple coneflower and, and blackberry bushes and that type of stuff. And this is where we do photography. This guy's photo blinds are occupied every single weekend of the year, every single weekend of the year. And I now have to book him in advance, a year in advance to get my workshops in there. And so, you know, this is just a backyard photo blind. This isn't even out on the ranch. And what's it get but blue jays and cardinals and titmouse and goldfinches and that type of stuff. But the thing is, he's got it set up so that photographers want to come there. So there's a lot of different opportunities besides just these, these things that John Martin was talking about. You've just got to start thinking about what in the heck you can do with your property. Butterflies are just as hot as birds, even though we're not talking about butterflies as much, but there are butterfly fanatics that will do exactly the same thing. So during the times of the year when you've got butterflies on your property in your wildflower fields, there's a whole butterfly group out there that'll do exactly the same thing. So an overview today, as I talk pretty fast, is, is why Photoshop, photo workshops and tours, placing your property on the market, adding value to your property, advertising, maintaining your client list, and the following things. I am also an old marketing professor. I've been teaching marketing for the last 25 years at my local community college. I teach part-time. And um, so my job is always thinking about marketing as well as thinking about photography. So if you think about this in this, in this, this income generating uh, pie chart that you've got for your property, think about adding that nature tourism to your property. It's probably not gonna bring in as much money as some of your other areas, but at the same time, it's one more income generating area. I have the same type of pie chart for my business. I have stock sales, I have speaking engagements, I have photo tours, I have prints. I've got the exact same thing because as self, let's face it, as self-employed people, we've got to have our, we've got to have a lot of irons in the fire to make any money in, in, in the, the world today. And so your, your nature photography can, also, can be just one more income stream that you've got for your property. The myths about photo workshops is you won't have to do anything. The reality is no, it's not. Somebody is going to have to help out and work. It's easy. It's not easy. There's some background work that's got to be done. You can't just suddenly say, yeah, y'all come to my property. There's some background work that's got to be done. And people are not going to be a, a path to your door. But you do it right. And I think that you can easily get five, six, seven workshops coming through your property a year. And if you want to do it every single weekend, like my friend in North Carolina, then you could do it that way too. But it just takes some time and some effort to build it up. So tours versus workshops. Let's talk about the two different ways, uh, two different terms in the business of my business. A tour is where we, a workshop leader or tour leader at this, in this case, is leading people to a place and we're showing them what to photograph and then they're photographing it. This is the easiest thing for me to lead is a tour. And a tour is just where we would do like breeding birds of South Texas. And so I would, I would position that in for, for South Texas in late March, early April, and we would go in and shoot the photo blinds for the breeding birds. Spring wildflowers, obviously you've got to make sure you've got spring wildflowers. Some years we do, some years we don't. You know, it's kind of hard to choose sometimes. 